Now that we know the basics of dynamic, mem dynamic memory allocation, let's see how, how uh, it is implemented. Okay? So the, implementa the main implementation issues or questions are, first, how do we know how much memory to free given just a pointer, right? Remember that free just takes a pointer as a parameter. So just based on the pointer, we need to know how much memory to, to free. So how do we keep track of which blocks in our heap are free? Okay. So how do we pick a block among the free blocks to be allocated that uh, when many of them might be suitable, we, how do we pick uh, the best one? Okay, so it, be, it could be because we need to reduce fragmentation, we need to be fast enough, and so on. Um, and also, if you happen to pick a free block that is bigger than what you need, what do you do with the rest of the block? I have to make that useful somehow. And finally, how uh, do we reinsert a block when it's freed? Okay, we have to re reinsert the block into the heap. Uh, let's solve the first question first. So we need to know how much to free. So the standard method is just to keep the length of a block in a word preceding the block. So we're going to make, we're going to have a header field. Okay? So that's going to require some extra words. It's a little bit of overhead, but it will be worth it. Okay? So for example, here's our uh, heap, and we have this free block here. When I call malloc, I decide to use this block. Okay? And now what we're going to do, we're going to use one of the words here to store the block size. So now I know that you know there's a word preceding the pointer where the data is. I know that the immediate word always contains a block size. So I know how much to free. Okay. So when I call free, I just know I'm going to call free, free passing p0, which is right here, right? So right here, and I know that the previous word contains a block size, so I know what to free. Pretty simple. Okay. Now the next question. Keeping the track of keeping track of uh, free blocks a little bit more complicated. There's a bunch of options. The first method is an implicit list, which is going to see now. We're just going to chain together based on the on the length on the size of the block. We can always determine what are the blocks in our heap and so on. Okay. So now there's an explicit that's implicit because we traverse it and we look whether it's allocated or not. The other method is explicit. So we're going to have a linked list of all blocks that are free. Okay. And then, and then there's some other uh, more sophisticated ways that we can segregate different free lists based on the size, or we can sort the blocks based by size just to make it faster and more efficient to allocate um, uh, blocks. Okay? All right, so let's look at implicit free lists now. So for each block, we need to know two things, right? What is its size and whether it's allocated or not. We could store that into words. But it's a little wasteful, right? This allocated here, fundamentally, we only need one bit. So using the entire word for it is so wasteful. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to use a standard trick that does the following. Since the blocks are aligned, we know that the low order bits of the addresses are always zero. Okay? For example, if you have an 8-byte alignment, all our addresses are going to look like this. You know, the lower three bits are all going to be zero. So why not use this last bit here and say, okay, we're going to use that bit to, to tell us whether the block is allocated or not. Okay, so now, so here's the format then of allocated blocks. We have the payload, that's the useful part, and P is going to point to here. Okay, the P is a pointer to, to the block. We know that the previous word here, the previous word contains the size, and um, the low order bit is going to tell us if it's set to one, the block is allocated. If it's set to zero, the block is free. Okay. And payload might be some padding because uh, we might have some padding here because we want to honor alignment requirements. Okay. So note that since we're going to use this bit for the lower bit for allocation, whenever we're reading the size, we need to mask out this bit. And you know how to do that because you know everything about uh, uh, fiddling with bits by now. Right? Okay. So let's see how this looks uh, in, a, in an example. Okay. So suppose that we have a sequence of blocks in our heap. We have Two, that's, and by the way, this is work is size and allocated. So we have a block of two that is um, at size two and it's not allocated. Four and one that's allocated and so on. Okay? So uh, the um, blocks that are white are free. The uh, light gray is allocated and used. And then uh, dark gray is allocated but unused. Okay? Right. So, and we're going to use our example, an 8-byte alignment. Okay, so that means that we may require the initial words to be unused. It does cause some internal fragmentation, but it might be worth it. Okay. 
So, and we have one word here, zero, size zero, which doesn't make sense to be zero, right? But allocated is just going to be a marker at the end of the list. That, that, that's, that's the end of our free, uh, uh, of our free list. Okay? So, let's see how we find a free block. The first way we're going to do this is using something called the first fit. Okay? So, and the idea here is just to search the list from the beginning. We choose, we choose the first free, free block, searching the list, that fits. And here's how the code works, okay? So, P starts at the beginning of the heap, okay? So, and uh, we have this loop that why we have not reached the end of the heap, and the block is already allocated. If it's allocated, it's not useful, right? And the size of the block is lower than the length, okay? is lower than the required size. And until we do that, we just go to the next block. Okay. So um, now, this, this can take time linear to the total number of blocks allocated and free. And um, allocated free, like the all blocks in the, in the implicit free list. And in practice, this calls splinters at the beginning of list, because we're going to have large blocks. We're going to find the first one. So uh, that means that we're going to start, we're not going to use that very efficiently. Okay? So now the next fit is just like first fit, but you start from where you stopped uh, during the last, when, when you stopped when you did the last malloc. Okay? So it should often be faster than first fit because it avoids rescanning uh, blocks that are unhelpful. And then, but some, some research suggests that fragmentation is worse. Okay? Now, there's something else called the best fit, which you search the entire list, and you find the best free block, which is the one that was the fewest bytes left over. Okay? By the way, so uh, splinters, in case it wasn't clear when I said, is when you, have, you, you tend to find blocks that are too big for what you need, so there's a little bit more waste. Okay? So best fit, we don't have that problem, because you're always going to find the one that's the best one among the free blocks that you have, the one that's the smaller one that's sufficient to honor your request. So this, of course, keeps fragmentation small, and it helps, so it usually helps fragmentation, okay? And typically runs slower, because uh, you're going to have to look at the entire list as opposed to stopping when you find the first one. Okay? Um, so let's um, look at something called splitting now. So what is splitting? Well, when you find a, a block, that, that the free block that's bigger than what you need, Instead of just leaving this there, you know, like for example, um, here if I allocate uh, my block P here and I only need four, what's going to happen with this here? Well, when we allocate, we need only four, we can just split it and leave it there. Okay, so that's, that's really what, what, what we want to do because we don't want to use this whole six, uh, uh, block size of six because then it's going to be wasteful. Okay, and the way this is, works is as follows. First, we get, for example, we, we're calling this function as add block of size 4 at pointer p. Okay, p points right there. We add, some, we, we add a block of size 4. What's going to happen is now we're going to, point to, we're going to create a free block uh, of size 2, right? 6 minus 4. And then we're going to, uh, okay, so that's it. Now, um, here's how we're going to implement this function called add block. And we're going to implement, uh, we, we, we're going to say new size equals len plus one, shifted by one, left by one. That's pretty cool. You know what it's doing? Just rounding up to even. And it's just run, it's run, rounding up to even just because of our alignment requirements. Okay, we're going to have an even number of words because of our alignment requirements. Now, we're going to keep the old size here, so we're going to mask out, um, we're just going to mask, mask out a little bit and get the size. And now, um, the, the new size here, P has a new size and uh, ordered with one to mark that it's allocated. Okay. But now if the new size is smaller than the old size, what we're going to do is P plus the new size, which points to the next block, is going to be old size minus new size. And we do not set the low bit here because the block is free. Pretty cool, huh? Okay. So, well, now how do we free a block? Well, this, the simplest way is to just clean is just to clear the uh, allocated flag. Okay, so we can do this, just allocate. We just uh, clear the bit by masking it out. But this is, 
this is bad because it can lead to false fragmentation, right? So now for, I, I have a free block of four here and a free block of two here. Why not just make it look like a block of six? Because if we don't, later if I do need a block of uh, size six, I'm not going to be able to honor it because I'm going to think I don't have one enough. But this is not, not real fragmentation, but it looks like real fragmentation, right? So that's a big oops. What's the problem? Now I want to allocate five, then I can't, I can't honor it. Okay? So there's enough free space, but the allocator won't be able to fit it just because it got a little confused. So naturally, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to coalesce these free blocks into a larger one. Okay, so now, for example, if we have uh, this, this pointer P here to this block 4, when I free it, what I want to do is to make this logically gone and uh, free it and make the size of the, the new free block be 6. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to clear out the allocated bit, bit find the next block, and if it happens to, to be free, we're just going to um, adjust the size. That's all. Pretty cool, right? So we just add to we just add the sizes if, if they're free. And again, since the allocated bit is free, you can just do this addition without uh, masking out the bits. Okay, but now. Um, how do we coalesce with the previous block? Suppose that I wanted to free a block, and uh, I free the block, but the previous one is also free. How do I point backwards? I could just start from the beginning of the, the heap and scan again, but that's slow. And remember, we want, we want to have high throughput. So that's why we're going to do. We're going to do bidirectional, bidirectional coalescing. This was invented a long time ago. And the idea is to use, to, is to replicate the size here, the header at the bottom. Okay, so we, we replicate the header at the bottom, so both the sides and the allocated bit, and I can use that to traverse it backwards, so we can just uh, join them. Pretty cool, isn't it? Okay, so here's a summary of implicit free, li implicit, uh, free lists. The implementation is very simple, okay? The allocate cost is linear time on the total number of heap blocks, including allocated and free, okay? So the free cost is constant time, okay? In the worst case, even with coalescing, because we know how to point uh, uh, both forwards and backwards, so we never have to scan the heap. Uh, and uh, so the memory utilization that we get is going to depend on the placement policy, whether it's first fit or best fit or next fit. And uh, so this is not used in practice for malloc and free because of this linear time allocation. That's still not good. We can do a lot better. We're going to see that. But it is used in some special purpose applications. Okay. So, and by the way, keep in mind that the concept of splitting and boundary tags are general to all allocators. Okay, so we, we're going to use uh, this uh, concept of splitting, splitting um, free blocks, right? So we don't, you, you don't waste the part that was still free in your block in case you use a block that's larger than what you need. And we're going to use things like boundary tag to make uh, coalescing fast. See you soon.